to whom it may concern. First and foremost, I would like to offer congratulations to each and every member of staff working here. When I set out upon that gravel path, I never once thought we could break space and time in such ways as we have. The amount we have created is something I once believed unthinkable, and yet there is still more we can bring into being. Our work is far from complete, and there are many steps, mandatory steps, before we can even consider the notion of quitting. Over the course of our experimenting, we've discovered possibly innumerable ways in which the universe can be destroyed, and ways in which we can contain the fragments. Everything we've done, from the hateful star to the telekill alloy, has been a complete success. Through all this, I wish the Foundation many, many years of success to come. However, that is not the point of this letter. The point of this letter is to inform you all of the success of my latest experiment. Yes, I have continued my research into the unknown. But before I tell you about this one, I must delve into the reasoning for this experiment. The idea for this particular line of research came to me about six months after we'd started. I was worried. Yes, I know. That's maybe a bit out of character for a man with so much power. But I was worried. You see, we'd been creating all of these wonderful things, but we had to be secretive. We had to make sure that no one would know. As the months dragged by, this worry festered. It's always going to raise suspicions when you disappear almost entirely and then reappear several months later as the head of a huge company. Every time I heard a rumor that a certain SCP was man-made, it sent a shiver down my spine. I paced up and down in my lap, wondering how best to cover my tracks. I didn't want to be punished for advancing human knowledge. I wanted to keep a firm grip on everything until I died, as did all of the others. We worked together. We arranged for some of the entities to be found, and we wrote the reports for the others. But this was not enough. I had to find a way to ensure that no one could ever find me, or anyone around me. And I soon hit upon an incredible idea. What if I could erase myself from existence? I know, that makes it sound like I wanted to kill myself, but I wasn't planning on ending my life. I was planning on wiping myself from official documents making it seem like I'd never existed at all. And the best way, I thought, to cover my tracks, that was it. Destroy all of the tracks completely. It took a few months of solid, hard work, but I eventually finished. I found a way to make it look like I'd never existed. It was dangerous, I won't lie. I constructed a Faraday cage around my lab for protection due to the potentially volatile nature of the experiment. And then I extracted everyone to stay clear of the room. And then I got to work. My suspicions were first raised when my own brother walked into the room and was surprised to see that I was there. I was confused, but I assumed he'd just forgotten that I was there. I went to the cafeteria and found people trying to work out, when did we build that Faraday cage? I ignored them, as, you know, I hadn't told that many people that I was building it. When I found an official document detailing the room that I was in, that's when I realized that something was wrong. I had been classified as an SCP. I didn't just erase myself from official documents. I erased myself from existence entirely. People came into my lab to take photographs of me, to converse with me, to figure out what I was. High-level researchers, my friends, my brother, didn't recognize me anymore. No one could remember me. Even hours after the 50th visit, I continued my work. I made more of these things, and then I put them in containment. And almost immediately, I noticed that people had no idea where they came from. Not in the official documentation, of course, I'd handled that. But more specifically, Thomas and my brother were discussing in hushed tones how they hadn't created those. And at that point, the realization of what I'd done really hit me. My reason for creating the Foundation, what it contains at first, was discovery. To discover what we could do if we bent reality. To see if we could improve lives. Now, of course, it's a different story for some of the others. Some of them are in it for personal gain. Some for more of that discovery we yearned after in the beginning. Even more for a chance to create the impossible. 
But that doesn't explain my reasoning. You see, the thing is, after bending the laws of physics so many times, I kind of got used to playing God. Now I get to be one. I get to manipulate reality from behind the scenes. I classified myself Keter to see how you'd react to the idea of something potentially world-ending, completely fading from memory. And I edited myself into the official document on how we started, although you won't remember my name being there. I've told everyone that I'm not a sphere, and that's the only thing you'll ever remember about me. While the number of SCPs I have created is quite small, the number of ideas I gave birth to is tremendous. I started manipulating people, too. I started discussing with high-ranking researchers that I'd told to come to my room what else they could do with SCPs, how they could worship machines, make art, mass-market them for profit, or just destroy them. And when they left, they forgot about me, but they remembered the ideas. They assumed that the ideas were theirs, and so they saw them out. It's almost like brainwashing. It gave me power. More power than I'd ever thought I could get. More power. It gave me power. Power that I've lusted after since the beginning of the Foundation. I'm controlling all of these people, even you. You see, after reading this letter, you'll rush off to go tell someone, and along the way you'll drop the letter and forget where it is you're going. You could be the first person to read it. You could be the hundredth. It doesn't really matter. And after this, you go back to being nothing but a pitiful, powerless pawn created for the sole purpose of testing my control. Everything that the Foundation and any of the other groups has done is down to me and me alone. Sometimes I come up with ideas and tell other researchers. Sometimes I create them and put them in containment. I organize outbreaks to test the might of my creations, and every idea, every thought you have ever had in your measly, unimportant waste of a life is either known or made by me and me alone. I know that you consider me evil or unjust or corrupt. I know you believe that this is unacceptable and a gross misuse of power. The truth is, gods do not adhere to the same restrictive moral code as the rest of you. Yours forgettably, Aaron Siegel, but you can call me 055. Hello again. Still pretty sick. Feeling better. Thought I'd take another day just to do a reading. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and then in the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And if you really want to support the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dcimerian like everybody here on the screen already has, including Manuel Noltorp lawful evil, and probably a wizard and definitely not a scientist, who have all pledged $40. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here. I'll see you all again on Tuesday.